Gucci is one of the most sought after brands out there. So there are many people that would like the famous Italian name on their cars. And Aldo Gucci, the son of the founder Gucci Gucci, understood this fact quite early, thus becoming one of the first clothing brands partnering up with different car brands and starting a trend which now is more popular than ever. So hello guys and welcome back to another video and here are the cars of Gucci. AMC was never known for making luxury cars, but if there was something that they were known for, it was that they always thought outside the box, even though their ideas didn't always work. And one of their ideas was to partner up with fashion design brands. In the early 70s, AMC started offering different design packages, like the Pierre Cardin package for the Javelin, the Levi for the Gremlin, and the Oleg Cassini for the Matador, while the Gucci package was offered for the Hornet. For most part, the exterior remained the same on all these models, besides some special colors and the logo or the crown of the brand in the front fender. Not much was, was changed on the exterior of these cars. All the magic happened inside, where everything was dressed up with the best materials and special designs, which reflected the fashion brand. The Hornet was mostly green, with the seats being green and white, and with a white and red stripe in the middle, while the headliner was covered with the iconic double G logo. The trim proved to be quite popular. In 1972, AMC managed to sell over 2,500 cars, which is a lot when you consider that AMC only sold around 34,000 Hornets in total that year. The Gucci package was also offered in 1973, when more than 2,200 cars were sold. There were two reasons why this option was so popular. First was the marketing. AMC was targeting women with this product. The second reason was that Gucci trim wasn't that expensive. The trim costed only $142, or $860 in today's money. The weirdest thing is that Aldo Gucci also owned a Hornet, but his version was way more extreme. Firstly, this time the car had received some exterior changes, with the main focus being the grill, now featuring the Gucci logo. Also, Aldo Gucci had replaced the normal headlights with clear ones, which completely changed the look of the car. But again, the interior was the best part here. Beside the red and green colors, the seats now were dressed up with a Gucci double G pattern, similar with their bags. In my opinion, this is how the Gucci trim should have been from the beginning, but this probably would have made the car way more expensive. After the success of AMC, many other brands started offering similar trims. The most notable one here was Lincoln, with their design series for the Continental Mark IV. But Gucci wasn't part of the designer series. Gucci showed huge interest to work on this project, but they were refused by Ford since they had worked with AMC before. So instead, they turned to General Motors to work on the Cadillac. But GM wasn't interested to build any special editions. But they suggested Gucci, another company, which was called International Automotive Design, a design and coach building company, to build their Gucci edition Seville's. Also, that customers could order the Gucci trim from Cadillac dealers. So the only thing here was that the car wasn't officially built by Cadillac. But in the end, this was a good thing, since allowed Gucci to make something truly crazy. The exterior also received some changes this time. The most obvious one was that the vinyl roof was replaced with Gucci leather, while the Cadillac crest in the front and in wheel hubs were replaced with Gucci gold emblems. The interior was dressed mostly with tan leather, with a ceiling, headrest and armrest being covered with a Gucci pattern. Also some parts were gold plated now. In 1978, the Seville by Gucci costed almost $20,000, or $78,000 in today's money. 
and that is about three times more expensive than his stock Cadillac Seville. It's unknown how many designs by Gucci Seville's were sold, but because of the high price, of course, not many could have been sold. But this wasn't a bad thing since from the beginning the car was supposed to be sold in low numbers. In the words of Aldo Gucci, Gucci style for this car was created with the aim of giving a few owners a rare opportunity to possess the subject of distinction, beauty and absolute luxury. The same formula was also used for the second generation Seville, which was introduced in 1980. With some minor changes here and there, with the main ones being the fake spare wheel on the trunk and the red and green stripe on the sides. The design by Gucci Seville was on sale until 1984 when the trim was discontinued due to poor sales. The failure of the second generation Seville also might have affected this. But the best Gucci edition car would come in 1980 and this was the Lynx Eventer Diseño di Paolo Gucci. Lynx was a British coach builder which was founded in 1973, and for the most part they built replicas of Jaguar C and D types. In the 80s they would start turning XJSs into convertibles, but with Jaguar introducing the XJS convertible in 1988, Lynx had to create something else, and the Eventer is what they came up with. This was the shooting brake version of the XJS, and this car just looked so gorgeous. It's said that Jaguar never offered a XJS shooting brake. The Aventor caught the attention of Paolo Gucci, the son of Aldo. But by this time, many things had changed with Gucci. Internal family disputes had brought Gucci to the brink of disaster. By 1988, the family had lost the ownership of the company. So, Paolo saw this as his way to return in the, in the fashion business. The interior was trimmed with blue leather and with crocodile skin inserts, a blue Alcantara ceiling and a special design dashboard. And of course, the bundle included a whole set of Paolo Gucci bags with the same blue color as the interior. Paolo didn't change much on the exterior of the car, only the color was a bit special. The car was presented at the 1990 Geneva Motor Show, and the car had a price tag of £100,000, or about £222,000 in today's money, with a limited production of 20 cars. Sadly, the owners of Gucci name weren't happy with this, and right the next day they took action, so the car was renamed Lynx and Vetter Diseño di Palo Gucci. Lynx didn't like this change, so the partnership was cancelled. But the most famous Gucci car is of course the Fiat 500 Gucci edition. The car was presented in 2011 and was built to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the unification of Italy and Gucci's 19th anniversary. The design was created by Gucci creative creator director Frida Ginani, together with Fiat Centrostilia. The car was available with two colors, black Nero Lux and white Bianco Lux. Also the car was available with Gucci stripes. On the 500 the stripes were on the sides, while on the 500C the stripe was on the cloth top. The car proved to be quite successful, becoming one of the most successful 500 trims out there. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.